Praise be Jesus Christ. It's the Feast of St. John Paul II today. St. John Paul II, he's a real phenomena. He lived through the sexual revolution when almost the whole world, or certainly the Western world, um, was setting aside basic uh, sexual morality and embracing the, if it feels good, do it, uh, philosophy. And St. John Paul II, he responded by talking a lot about sex. He wrote the theology of the body, which is based on sacred scripture, the unbroken teaching of the Catholic Church, the, 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 the great saints, the moral theologians, the natural law. And what he presented us in the theology of the body, it's very challenging. But it's also very inspiring, and it also affirms our human dignity. And that's why St. John Paul II, he managed to inspire millions and millions and millions of young people. Think about the World Youth Days. That was a phenomena. The, the, the crowds of young people at a time when so much of the Western world especially was just setting aside the, the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the traditional uh, teaching on, on, on sexuality and um, the natural law, St. John Paul II speaks a challenging word, but also a hopeful word. And uh, I just want to quote to you from, I'm reading this little booklet during my prayer time. It's, it's called Sing Your Love, Disciples of Our Eucharistic Lord. And the author, he says, this is a little technical, so pay close attention. He says, first, on the natural level, there is the dignity of virtue and the degradation of vice. Through the practice of virtue, we learn to use our humanity, shall we say, as it was meant to be used. Once practice produces a firmly established virtuous character, we possess the power to use our humanity right. And he goes on, he's talking about virtue. And then he says, established virtue increases the innate dignity of the human person, making the rational nature shine forth with a special brilliance. We were made to shine as children of God, made in His image and likeness, uh, but we must live according to our nature. We must uh, em embrace the practice of, of, of growing in virtue and become virtuous. He goes on to say, contrawise, vice enslaves a person to one or more disordered passions. The reason is darkened, especially regarding the truth about God and human life, and becomes chained to the service of passion. In the worst case, in the in the worst cases, the reason is so weakened that a person begins to live more by animal instinct. And those of you who are, are following my school of reading, um, in September we read the uh, revelations, the father speaks to his children, the revelations of Sister Eugenia. And in these revelations, God the Father says, there was times in the Old Testament when humans were beginning to live like animals. You know, through vice, we can, we can degrade ourselves to this degree. Vice does not altogether destroy the innate dignity of the person, but it most certainly obscures it. The light of reason is hidden beneath the bushel basket of passion. And so St. John Paul II, he called young people to recognize their dignity to not conform to this age, but to become uh, virtuous, to become holy, and to beca become sh bright and shining lights. And this truth, the splendor of the truth that he spoke, it 
inspired millions and millions of young people around the world. Uh, in the passage from the meditation, they quote, uh, or they refer to Revelation 2. Our Lord Jesus says, Yet I hold this against you. You have lost the love you had at first. Realize how far you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Viva Cristo Rey and St. John Paul II pray for us.